Hello, I'm Christopher Walker and today I'm joined by Glenn Standish. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, conferences and teachers going to conferences. Uh, so um, let's go straight into it. So Glenn, uh, can you tell us a, uh, a bit about yourself first of all? Sure. Good morning, Christopher. Um, how are you, by the way? Oh, okay. very good. Always good. Yes. Okay, so yeah, my name is Glenn Stanish. I'm the Director of Studies here at International House Turin. Um, basically been working here for the last 10 years, uh, but I have been teaching in Poland for over 17 years now. Um, originally born in New Zealand, but I left New Zealand when I was two, lived in England for many years, hence why I have very much um, a, a, an English, British, I should say, accent. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. We're going to be thank looking you. at conferences, which is um, kind of a speciality of yours, really, isn't it? Well, um, I never thought so, but I guess, yeah, it has become one. <laughs> um, ever since, you know, for the last, oh gosh, five or six years now, I've been uh, organising uh, the IH Tour and Teacher Training Day conference, mm -hmm. which has grown each year and has become, uh, um, you know, quite a big conference now. Um, which is, you know, a, you know, a worthy conference, I should say, to go to on the ELT calendar. Oh, absolutely. It certainly is. But for somebody who has never been to a teaching conference, uh, what would you say is the general point of them? What would you say to convince somebody that they should go? Well, it's a very good point, Christopher. Um, I think, you know, it all depends whether you as an English teacher are getting enough CPD. Um, continuous professional development mm -hmm. and um, it looks like you know in, in a lot of cases uh, the answer is no you're not um, you know it depends whether your 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 language school or your own state school is actually investing in the time and money to provide you with that development and often the case is not so then the teacher themselves really is quite itching and you know really wanting to go and develop and mm -hmm. so um, I've noticed there's especially here in Poland there's a real demand for teachers to go and attend conferences um often and, and it's same in our conference they will get a certificate uh which they can then show to their state school um you know state schools and that also looks good on their cv as well so um it's actually you know there's a real reason to attend conferences it really is all part of your professional development yeah, absolutely and this kind of answers my second question the the idea that you do get a piece of paper at the end of these things but generally what would you say is the the, the sort of positive impact that going to a conference can have on a teacher in their career rather than just for their professional development well absolutely. You, you learn so much in conferences um take for example um the ih tour and teacher training day um there will be like 30 workshops to to choose from i mean you can only really choose about five there's so many and you know a variety of different um, um areas of english teaching um so you basically choose what you want to um and um you learn so much a lot of the ideas are very practical that you can then go and implement almost immediately in your next lesson um they're the ones i i, I like a lot but of course then it's always good to get a lot of theory as well yeah, I've noticed that if you go to the right conference and the right talk, it can really lead to a kind of paradigm shift in your teaching that mm. might not have happened otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about presenting at conferences mm. rather than just attending them. Uh, what, what would you say it's like to present at a conference? It's, it's an interesting experience, uh, especially when you're on stage and there's like, you know, 100 people in front of you, 150 people. It doesn't even matter if there's only just 30 people in front of you. Um, every experience is, you know, is, a, is a, an exciting experience. It's full of like um, a mixture, let's say, of nerves, excitement, maybe a little bit of stress. And, you know, wait until the adrenaline kicks in and <laughs> then it's, you know, always showed up. Always finding maybe like the first, you know, 10 seconds or, or 20 seconds when you're up there is the most crucial part. Mm -hmm. um, but when once you get into the swing of things and, and you're, you're up there, you're talking in front of these people, um, it, you know, it really goes, you know, it flows pretty well. Yeah. Um, of course, it depends on a lot of you know, the people. I do understand, you know, for a lot of teachers, a lot of people who, who, who would want to present, it, can, it is a very, very stressful experience. Um, mm -hmm. And there are tips, you know, um, to overcome this stress. You know, one very good tip is to actually, in, you know, before you talk, is to actually go and engage 
with members of your audience. Just chat to them. Oh, how are you? Where are you from? Why are you here? Great, you know, that you're here to see me. Thank you very much. You know, just by doing that, it kind of breaks the ice uh, before you're up there and you're talking um, on the stage. Yeah, I really felt that that was a key part of the uh, IH Torren Teacher Training Day when I attended it last year. It was the first time that I spoke at a conference in God knows how long. Uh, but before you went straight into all the conference talks, you had that kind of um, like a common room setting. You, you brought pizza in, there was drinks, you know, coffee, tea and everything like that. People were mingling and chatting and they were meeting other people. And then as a speaker, when I went into my room to present, uh, I saw the same faces again. And it, it felt less like I was presenting to a group of strangers and more people that I'd already gotten to know of it. Absolutely. Well, to be honest, it's a good tip as well, not just for conference presenting, but for teaching your own class. You know, mm -hmm. often I'm dealing with quite newly qualified teachers and, um, you know, it's a very good tip. You know, it can be stressful standing in front of a class, even a class of 12 students. And um, there's always that sort of period of time before the lesson starts where the students are sitting there and the teachers there as well. And there can be that bit of awkward silence until... 3.45 is on the clock and then you start. And I always try and encourage my teachers to chat to your students. They're humans, you know, yeah. engage with them. How was your weekend? Oh, great to see you again. You know, oh, did you manage to win that basketball tournament you were telling me about? You know, it shows that you're interested in them. And it also helps to break the ice and maybe calm your nerves a little bit as a teacher. So, I mean, you could also say the same thing. I know obviously a conference is a much grander scale, but you could also say the same about teaching English as well. Absolutely, definitely. Um, you've been to a lot of conferences as a speaker. Every time I go on to Facebook, you, you've posted <laughs> a photo from some other exotic location. Um, do you have a favorite presentation experience? That's a difficult question because I think um, it, they've all been memorable um, experiences. Um, probably one of my favourite experiences was when I was uh, presenting in a huge lecture theatre with about 120 participants at the IH Kiev uh, annual conference. Uh, but even like recently when I was in Minsk at the Sky Teach Festival, that was an interesting experience in the sense that um, we were like the presenters were made to feel like VIPs. Basically, they had um, <laughs> they had special assistants um, basically following us around and you know helping us. You know, and to be honest, sometimes I just wanted a bit of space, a bit of a break, and you know they were constantly there. I mean, I was walking up to the conference room and they're like oh we can show you where it is i think they just wanted you know to help and i was like i i, I do know where it is it's fine <laughs> but and we had our own you know like almost like a green room uh for speakers so you know it was nice so you, you you know and in in all cases though um always know the uh, there's great hospitality and they you know the hosts do look after you as as speakers yeah well i i should imagine that it's better to be followed around by the organizers than to be kind of abandoned by them yes um what yeah, you need to know exactly you need to know what's yeah. happening and and you know often you know i think probably the most stressful aspect of presenting is you know uh, relying on your um, and relying on technology you know um, yeah. always things can go wrong um you know powerpoint you know projectors can fail and so you, you know, need to have everything um set up beforehand and a, and a good conference organizer will ask you you know at least a, at least a week if not you know sometimes in my case it's happened several months before mm -hmm. the event they will ask you to send um their slides to to the organizer and they basically look after all that they put it all together um on their system and it's ready to go um of course it's always nice to you know it's good to do that but it's i know from my point of view i always like to have a quick look at the slides just beforehand you know as well so you know um it swings and roundabouts when it comes to that yeah um but you mentioned things like uh, the projectors failing and um you know slides not working or something like that have, has that ever happened to you have you ever had a a kind of moment of uh disaster or catastrophe i mean <sighs> Maybe there's been times when, you know, the projectors, you know, had an issue or something, but, you know, you just to try and keep going on and, and not worry too much about it. I think, you know, probably one of the, one issue I had, um, you know, in terms of like sort of like a, you know, maybe a funny incident or something like that, or, you know, when anything went wrong at a conference was at the IATEFL conference a couple of years ago. And um, I was doing a, 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 a talk about making English real. And... Yeah. Um, 
I was put into um, a, a large classroom and uh, um, I was told there would be about 60 people at my talk. And obviously I wanted everything ready beforehand. So a couple of hours before I went in there, set up my laptop, everything was ready to go. And I was in the room um, waiting and people coming in and people kept coming in and more people kept coming in. And literally, you know, there's people in there, you know, there's well-known people like John Hurd's in the audience as well. You know, they're all standing there and, you know, I'm in a classroom and people are getting really close to me. You know, I've got the whiteboard behind me and literally it was a point of a standing room only where there were people standing either side of me, you know, pretty much invading my, my <laughs> space. So what happened was I, then I started hearing sort of people muttering that all oh, we're changing rooms, changing rooms. I was pretty much the last to know about this. <laughs> and next thing I know, um, we've had to change everything and move into the huge um, aula, you know, the huge um, main plenary auditorium, wow. uh, because basically it turned out there was over 150 people uh, who had signed up for my talk. So obviously they wanted to hear how to make English real. Um, <laughs> it wasn't all about wanting to hear Glenn Stanish. It was about hearing making English real, um, which was all very well. It's fine. But it meant, you know, um, I had everything set up and, you know, we had like internet connection. I wanted to show them something on the internet. So yes, there were technical problems because then we had to get it all ready again. And I think we started about 10, 15 minutes late on that one. But, you know, these things happen. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And um, mentioning the whole uh, kind of oversubscription that you, you sometimes get when there are more people wanting to go to sessions than others, I noticed that this year for your IH Torah and Teacher Training Day, you've gone online with the kind of the registration for the sessions. Yeah. So people can choose which uh, sessions they want to go to and it kind of um, I think that's a big improvement over last year where you just had pieces of paper on the wall and you sign your name um, but that suggests to me that uh, running a, co a conference and organizing a conference is a kind of evolutionary process you're always looking for yeah. innovations and, and fixes for, for problems as they emerge so could you quickly just tell us a little bit about the history of your uh, IH Toron teacher training day well, sure. Yeah. Before I, I, before I do, I will absolutely add on to that. I mean, you're right. I mean, at the end of every conference, we always hand out or send out an electronic survey. Um, of course, not everybody completes it. But, you know, I do still get, you know, at least 50 or 60 people doing so. And, you know, from that, you really do get good feedback. And yes, you know, um, it's always been the way we had sort of like paper sign up forms, you know, people would come in and do it on the day. And that's, you know, just how it had always been when we've been doing our teacher train days. But the issue is, you know, when you know more and more people are coming, um, and you know, um, it's um, and you know, our conferences are becoming more and more successful. We it simply would not be practical to have you know 180 people um, in the uh, corridor signing up on papers. So this is why we we're trying, we're experimenting with this uh, idea, and I, it's an idea I got from other conferences. I know IH Kiev and also IH Minsk been doing similar things uh, having an electronic sign up um and you know it is good because it does give you an indication of uh, which sessions are becoming you know the most popular uh, for example i can tell you now christopher yours is actually sold out <laughs> 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 yeah everybody's going to that one um <laughs> i like to say also mine is as well but you know it, it does help because sometimes we may have to shift the rooms as well I mean we had to do that at the last minute last year mm -hmm. uh, when Rob Howard's session was um, very popular and we had to change rooms um, and obviously doing it the last minute as I mentioned earlier is, is not always the way so having an idea of exactly how many are going to be coming in advance then we can just jiggle the rooms around and let people know um, at least you know 24 hours in advance so I no. think you know that, that is a good thing but anyway I'm going to to answer your question um, yeah I mean We've been doing IH tour and teach training days for years, you know, even before my time, you know, but they were always a very small scale thing. Mm -hmm. um, it was something to do, you know, often we would do it with the with the other IH schools in the network, you know, at least in North Poland. And that was obviously our sister school in Bidgosh. And, you know, um, it's no longer existing, but IH Koshalan as well. And we would have a very small training day where we had about 30, 40 teachers would come. You know, we were taking turns to go to the schools. Um, and um, the format is still very similar to IH Bidgosh. In, in December, we still go to IH Bidgosh. Um, and, you know, that, that's a quite, a, you know, a small scale just between us, which is great. It's really nice to just have, you know, our teachers, you know, mixing with the other teachers and stuff. But um, it was the former DOS director of studies at IH Bidgosh actually gave me the idea, Tim Bromley. Um, suggested that we actually 
you know, because I had taken over and I became the director of studies at Aisha, he suggested to me that we should possibly consider the idea of expanding these teacher training days and inviting other teachers, external teachers, state school teachers. Mm -hmm. and, and I did that. And I think, you know, the first time we did it, I think we had maybe five extra teachers. It was very, very small. Um, and then, you know, been doing that every year and um i started getting sort of like some well-known speakers um hugh Della, for example a co-author of outcomes uh, was one of the first and then um you know once you get sort of like a, a well-known speaker on board um then you know things start growing and you start inviting other people and every year it's expanded it went from like i think 50 to 70 then it went the next year was about 100 mm -hmm. then about uh, last year we had it about 135 uh, which was huge. It was very, very successful. And then um, this year, we've got 185 wow. people signed up. We've actually had to say, no, it's sold out. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, you know, always from experience, um, there's usually about a 15, 20 percent uh, dropout. You know, things happen, you know, and especially right now with this co coronavirus. Yes. Um, you know, who knows, you know, um, but um, hopefully it will still be, you know, a, a good, reasonable number of people coming. So yeah, oh. that's basically the history of the IH Tour and Teacher Training Day. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, can you tell me any, like, insider knowledge for people who might be interested in, like, uh, behind the wizard's curtain, something like that? <laughs> What's something that most people don't realise happens at a conference that you can tell us about? <laughs> well, I think, you know, if you want to organise a conference, you really need to start planning months in advance. In fact, um, this year's IH Tour and Teacher Training Day, basically, we knew the date almost a year before you know ago you know i mean you know that's the thing you know it's just we, we started planning it um way in advance purely because you know if you do want to have um you know a well-known speaker um you know they do get booked up a year or two in advance and you know as you know this year we got scott thornbury um and you know it was you know we had to make sure he knows available at that time and you've got to think about your dates as well because you know um, there's obviously the huge, I think the biggest date in the ELT uh, conference calendar, of course, is the main IOTEFL conference in, in the UK. And you really need to think about that you don't clash with that. I mean, that happens in April. Um, but of course, you know, it's inevitable. We you know you always end up clashing with other conferences. Um, of course, uh, the same weekend as the IHF or Slovenia conference, there's also um, a conference happening in IH Brno as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's inevitable, but you will clash. But, um, you know, that's one thing, you know, you do need to start planning months in advance. Um, and then obviously, you know, the few days beforehand, it's all, you know, hands on deck, you know, it's like a factory conveyor belt here at IH Tour and, you know, all the teachers are behind the scenes. And, you know, I, I must thank, you know, you know my, my wonderful teachers for being great volunteers. I, you know, this year I, I, I put it out to them. I said, look, you know, I'm not going to force you to help, but if you want to, by all means. And the majority of our teachers have agreed to do that, which is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, some of our teachers will be actually manning um, they will be given their own room um, and they're basically that's their job for the whole day they will be responsible for manning the room um, which I think is a good idea because um, yes you know speakers might be panicking just before their session and that person will be able to help them they'll be able to help set out rearrange the, uh, uh, the chairs after each session um, they would also help with any technical issues mm -hmm. and also most importantly they'll be sitting at the back of the room with the uh, 10 minute five yes. minute signs which yeah. i think you know, in the old days i used to go around with a whistle <laughs> <laughs> and i would blow the whistle five minutes before the end but a that's not very professional and b we've just grown too large to to be able to do anything like that so um, we always do have somebody holding up signs now yeah. um and well, yeah and other to... things sorry I'm glad that you mentioned all the other staff that are involved because that's one of the things that I did notice last year when I came along was just the, the professionalism. I was, you know, um, it was almost like these were people whose job and career was to help with uh, conferences. They were friendly, um, dynamic, uh, no problem seemed like a real problem when you addressed it to them. Um, I think it was a big part of what made the day so successful. So you're absolutely right, yeah. yeah. And I think it's important that, you know, one person is assigned one room because otherwise if we yeah. changing people around, it would get, you know, quite complicated. There's only a 10 minute window between the sessions. The downside on that, though, it does mean that, you know, um, they are not be able to see what, you know, some of the sessions they may have wanted to. But I, I always did try to 
give show them you know the rooms first and let them choose which room they wanted to go to so you know hopefully you know um they will be in a room that they you know they wanted to be in because obviously you know very much they will you know be allowed to take part in in the in the sessions as well you know they mm-hmm. they're there to help the the room but they're there also to um you know take part and this year um which is you know a sign that you know because we've grown and stuff we're actually going to be having uh, five volunteers of our students student volunteers um uh, these are all uh, students at high level classes uh, basically c1 going to c2 um so you know they're very good at english and you know also it looks good for their work experience and they will be getting a um a, a letter certificate at the end to say that they've uh, worked um you know here as a volunteer um which is something important for them um so yeah that's that's something new as well so they'll be helping out on the registration desks uh this year Oh, that's brilliant. Now, Glenn, I, I could talk to you all day about conferences, but I know that we've both got busy lives and we need to get back to them. Uh, before we finish, uh, are there any kind of social media links or anything like that you'd like to share with the audience so that they can kind of track you down and stalk you if they want to? Well, on the day, of course, there's the hashtag IHTourin TTD. Um, that's what Tango Tango Delta, I believe. <laughs> Tango Fuck Truck. Um, so yeah, um, there's that hashtag. You know, that's basically for anybody who's at the event and they can post, you know, stuff on there. But of course, we do have our IH Tour on Facebook page mm-hmm. as well. And of course, if anybody is interested, um, they can contact me direct. I'm sure you can provide them with my with my contact details be happy to do so yes wonderful so uh, once again thank you so much Glenn it's been a real pleasure uh, and I'm hoping we'll get to do this again we'll be able to explore some other topics in the fascinating world of English language teaching so thank you very much thank you as well Christopher it's a pleasure thank you very much